leadership and vision at the top. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. I'd like to recognize the gentle lady from the great state of California, Ms. Steele. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And this is very important hearing uh, on the state of the economy. So thank you for our guests for taking time from your busy jobs to discuss how they've been dealing with the economic downturn for over the last two years. And Mr. Plogger, I came from the uh, lumber business. My actually grandfather used to own. I've never seen this clean lumber yard ever, you know, in my life. So I used to play with dust and you know sawdust and all these woods and stuff. So I thought that I was expecting that kind of lumber yard, but this is very, very clean. So thank you. But thank you for opening up this place, and I'm so grateful. I represent Southern California, and our families pay some of the highest cost in the whole country. A lot of other states, they complain about, you know, how awful this economy and everything, but you know what, comparing to California, I think it's much better other states in the nation. One outrageous example of progressive policies that hurt my constituents is the fact that state gas tax is 50 cents per gallon, plus 23 cents for cap and trade program to lower greenhouse gas emissions, and 18 cents for state low carbon fuel programs. So our tax and fees are much higher than any other states. It went up last year, actually $9 per gallon people had to pay in California. Government's handouts without any plans makes working family class and the small business going through the very tough time. In California only, Ms. Buckman, you were working so hard to, for the restaurants. 40% of small business never came back in California, so it's really, really bad. So, Mr. Plogger, my constituents were on the front line of original supply chain crisis. We are located next to the port of Long Beach and LA. They are the number one and number two, the biggest size of ports in the nation. Ships were backed off the coast and trucks were lined up trying to get into the ports. This caused all kinds of disorder in our neighborhood and supply chain. In California, it's the worst progressive policy. So independent truckers cannot come in. A lot of truckers, actually 50% of the truckers are independent truckers. They cannot come into California and they cannot drive. I always tell people that you do whatever, you do opposite of what California government does, then you know what, you are doing the right thing. So you are trying to lead the company for work for. Can you share how American businesses have been left on the hook for a failed supply chain and how that affects not just your employees that I've been hearing, but those associated with your business and community? Well, as far as how American businesses have been left on the hook for the supply chain, I mean, it, again, it looked like there were things that the government probably could have done to help smooth the supply chain out or to help things run smoother. Um, and the, there really wasn't any action taken on any of that. Um, and American businesses were left to just pick up the pieces to figure out how to navigate that situation as best they could. And they did things, like I mentioned before, that you, you doubled up on the supplies that you bought because you didn't know when you could get them again. Right. Um, and all that that led to higher price increases because you know we were everyone was trying to grab everything that they could get so they had what they needed to operate um, same way on the on the exporting side there were a lot of unfair things that happen whether you are an importer or an exporter in dealing with with the steamship lines and with dealing with getting vessel space and get dealing with um, demerge costs and charges that were levied against you and you had you, you you were stuck with them I mean you you basically had no repercussion you had no way to argue them or to deal with them uh, it was just another cost levied against the, you that you had to deal with for somebody else's incompetence um, so all of it just led to more costs for American businesses. My next question is many employers have expressed concerns with me about the skill 
shortage in Southern California, I think it's in the nation too. Can you share how this could impact your business today, but also in the future, if not handled by the government correctly? Mm -hmm. um, as far as the steel shortage, we, we see a shortage in the, in the trades. Um, you know, in, in trying to hire um, people with welding skills, with 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 uh, you know different trade-related skills, there, there's definitely a shortage there. And there are a lot, there are tons of opportunities out there for 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 young people who would want to go into the trades, learn things like that. Um, you know, again, from our standpoint, and one thing that was mentioned a while ago was you know was our starting wages. At this plant, we're actually at thirteen dollars an hour. Ours run from thirteen to eighteen, depending on where you're at, but that is for entry level zero skill um, labor. If we can get people in, we'll train them. You know, we'll teach them. We'll give them skills, but but getting them to pass the drug test, to show up on time, to show up five days a week, uh, and do that on a regular basis, that's the challenge. And as, as one of my plant managers commented one time, we were meeting with an economic development authority person, and they were asking for job training they could offer. And, and he's, he made that comment, and he said, if their mama didn't teach them that, I don't know who, what kind of job training you're going to offer that's going to do that. You know, and that's, that's just the basics of, of, of being ready to go into the workforce. Thank you, Mr. Plugger, and thank you all the witnesses. I yield back. Thank you, Representative. I'd like to recognize the gentle lady from the great state of Texas, Ms. Vanna.